Okay, everybody, welcome to this video. I'm going to look at Kulamegi setup candidates for February 2024. And before we get started here, let's just take a look at the numbers from last month. So the ones that we identified at um, the beginning of January. And those were the leading stocks that we saw in December, right? So we're always looking back at the previous month. And last time we had 52 stocks that were up at least 25% over a month. You can see the name of this watch list right here in TradingView. I'm just going to open that up and you can see all these names. And yesterday we had pretty much of a down day in the last day of, of, of January. Markets in a, the Nasdaq was down almost 2% with the Fed leaving the interest rates unchanged and sort of tempering expectations of quick rate cuts. The market didn't really like that. And so you can see that all these leaders, they get beaten down very, very quickly. And this happens um, immediately in an even sort of leveraged fashion when the overall index does not perform well, right? So leverage, and momentum and volatility, whatever you want to call it, it works both ways. If the market doesn't support these momentum stocks to the upside, they get hammered down like crazy. And so the interesting thing is that we saw last month and also the months before, we were mostly dealing with old tickers, old names, bounce stories. Um, you know, you can, you can look at a firm, right? You can look at Bill, you can look at Chewy, you can look at Coinbase, you can look at DocuSign, you can look at Enphase, you can look at Robinhood, you can look at stuff in the past, you know, these almost bankruptcy companies like Hertz, right, showing up. Mara, right, crypto stuff, Moderna. What else do we have? Players here, right? Unity. Zoom Info upstart right all these names of let's just pick upstart as an example these are all beaten down stocks this is what they look like zoom info this is what they look like a lot of volatility right and if you look closely what has happened more recently to a lot of these stocks that were so strong, you know, just last month, they broke down again. A lot of them did. Or they just started stagnating, going sideways. Here it's Robin Hood, broke down, went a little bit sideways. Look at Chewy. Broke all the way back down, bill sideways, right? A firm sideways, right? Ever since beginning of January, this is beginning of January here, it's just been going sideways. So, this obviously does something to the selection we get for this month because it's going to be very limited. So, all these leaders here, I'm going to clean the list for the 25% movers over a month and then let's take a look at um, the leaders over three months you will find the same names pretty much there's a firm there's coinbase there's mara riot as well right and so on right we saw sentinel one in the other list as well we saw sunrun in the other list we saw to aspire signs in the other list so it's just a repetition mostly and it has to be because to get on the list of the best performers over three months, you need to have been in the list of the best performers over one month, right? That's, that's just entry stage to make it onto the quarterly list. So here we have like 25 or had 25 tickers. So we had a bit more than 50 on, on the one month performance list and here about 25, half of it. So let's clean that as well. And now let's take a look at uh, the filters that I use. 
And what you can see is actually very simple. We are looking at any stocks out of the universe here that trades at least half a million shares per day on average, that trades above $10, that has a market cap of at least 2 billion, and the volatility on the month, or which is actually per day percentage of 4%. So these are stocks that Kula Maggi terms as high ADR stocks, average daily range. And this is a substitute here because TradingView only gives ADR in absolute dollar terms. So that's not going to help you. This is a percentage approximation so that you can see roughly on average, the stock moves 4% a day. Right? This, is, this is the stuff that is really moving. These are the momentum stocks. So I never change these throughout the videos. This is always the same every month. And this time, if I sort by the monthly performance and I want to take a look at the stocks that are up at least 25%, I get very few. Can I just delete the whole list? Yeah, I think I just effed up. Let me create a new one. Top performers, one month, 25% plus. That's the first time I've done that. All right, guys. So let's see who is up at least 25%. Free stocks. I can I could include Ironwood Pharmaceutical, but how is that gonna help us? Right? This is a biotech pharma company. There are lots more here, more therapeutics, more biosciences, more therapeutics. Also here, Viking is a therapeutics company, right? So there's there's very little. There's just three of them. Let's take a look at um the three month top performers. And first, I need to create a new list. Top performers, three months. At least up 50%. It should actually be way more, should be like 70% or something, maybe 100%. But let's just use 50% um, for now. And let's see what we get here. I'm just going to. Select those guys. That's quite a bit more than the one one month. But again, you know, down here is the therapeutic stuff, so I'm not going to include that. There we are. And then we can take a look at them. So starting off with one month, this is the absolute rocket here, SMCI. It's been for for a while. So let's go straight up. This is a typical growth stock. Uh, the company posts higher than expected sales quarter after quarter after quarter. It's growing very aggressively. This is a typical stock that you would find in a William O'Neill book as an example. That's a typical Kula Maggi stock. First leg up consolidation, even though this consolidation took a long time. And then second leg up, right? This this is the typical stuff, but that's pretty much the only one out there. The other ones are health companies again, right? I don't know what Oscar does exactly, if it's a biotech or pharma or maybe something else in the health sector. Doesn't really matter. So that's one of the performers, and this is definitely a therapeutics company, right? So they always write their own stories. It's very, very thin. This reminds me of the end of October, early November, when the market was complete, completely not showing any performing stocks at all. But the difference back then was, if you look at the NASDAQ from back then, here that was back in November, this is where we were, nothing was showing up, and then we got a move like this. Now we're sitting here and nothing is showing up yet again, at least not on a one, one month performance watch list, right? Does that mean we're going to get another run up? No idea, right? I mean, if you get a bear market, you will not get these runners at all for a prolonged period of time, right? So we got to be a little bit careful. The market ran up substantially. And now we are again at a point where we were down here. But this time it might not be a good sign for a reversal. It might just be a sign for the market moving down, right? Then there's the list with the quarterly top performers. So this is probably one of the strongest one here, right? Over three months, you can see they go from 
fourteen dollars up to forty one. Right. I don't know what Avinas is. This is Viking again. This is Oscar again. This is, I believe, also a pharma or biotech company, if I'm not mistaken, but we can take a look in with CYTK. There it says biotech, right? A firm we know, SMCI we know, Mara we know. So all these old names are still on the board, right? There's another pharma company, pharma company. Stoneco, that is um, also well known, former growth, you know, stock here, software company, infrastructure. Look at the monthly chart. This is another one of those that crept out and started to bounce. There is um, DocuSign, sorry, the Digital Ocean. That's another one that crept out. Sentinel One is also one of those. Here's your Digital Ocean. GTLB is GitLab, another you know software-related stock, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what Natera is. NTRA. I lost track a little bit. Diagnostics and research. You can assume this is also a medical stock. Monday, remember this one from Growth Days, Therapeutics, Rocket Companies, RKT, Mortgage Finance, very, very interesting. Uh, Sunrun here, Solar Company, right? I've seen better days, right? It's just a dead cat bounce, more or less. Moderna, we don't even need to look at it. We know what that is. Coinbase, same thing. There's Snap, Dead Cat Bounce. AMD, we know. Ironwood, another pharma company. Elastic, also from the olden days, but you know they're holding up much better than all the rest. Kavana, of course, we remember that. MOD, Modine Manufacturing, I don't know what that is. What do they manufacture? Auto parts. Elf is a beauty company, and then finally there's Udemy. The IPO was was like two years ago, right after the end of the bull market. Congratulations, and then it just goes straight down, right? So old names, a lot of pharma and therapeutics names, right? Nothing has really changed. There is no new generation of stocks unless you believe in the pharma sector, right? So let's take a look at at Labu. How has Labu been performing more recently? It's the same thing, you know, starting in early November, Labu is a, is a triple leveraged bull ETF on biotech, went from 48 up to 144. That's a pretty good performance option. Obviously, it's like up 300%, right? If you um, look at the regular one for healthcare, you can see that went up from 123 to 140, right? I think IBB is biotech that is not leveraged. Yeah, 112 to 138. So there's not much difference between the unleveraged ones. They they went up like from 110 to 135 or something, right? And then obviously I have used leveraged stuff, we use leveraged stuff, right? So that's basically it. Last time Kula Maggie streamed was a month ago. He was basically saying breakouts don't work. He just looks at EPs, which are mostly earnings plays. Companies like SMCI that are constantly pushing out higher numbers. That's the kind of stuff he would be looking at. Um, but all the rest is, is just not interesting. So we don't have new generation of stocks. I keep saying that every month. I've been saying this for at least half a year now. It's just nothing new, right? And just because we don't find a lot of top performers over one month doesn't mean that the market is just going to go higher now, just as it did late October, early November. So this is something to just keep in mind. The market is going up, yes. There's a lot of large tech driven move. And there's a lot of money flowing into the markets because of inflation. When people still have some savings, they say, I don't want my money to rot away in my bank account. 
they just push it into large cap stocks, mostly tech. Um, and that's it. And that's when you get, you know, performance like NVIDIA. Like this. Right. See what the others are doing, what is Microsoft doing? It's pretty much the same. What is Google doing? Pretty much the same. Well, as of yesterday, that changed, right? Down 7%. Overall, you can see who is driving the market, right? You look at Meta straight up, right? And so this is essentially the story. Like it or leave it, um, we'll see what happens. Do I buy here? No. If you miss the train at some point, you miss the train, right? That's just what it is. So um, last year was massively successful year right? for Meta in particular. If you look at stuff from the past, like PayPal, that's not the case. So the question, which one of those big tech names actually really goes up, it's hard to say. It's trial and error, like most things in, in trading. At least if you're just a technical trader, then look, don't look at the fundamental story that much then, yeah. But some work, some don't, and um, that's what it is. All right, I hope this was somewhat helpful. So take care and talk to you soon. Bye.